did a very tentative look into One Piece Funko Pops. First of all, I've never really been a collector, so I've never really like it. I, I have a friend who has Funko Pops of various things, usually Marvel characters. And, you know, Marvel characters have, like, masks and costumes and stuff, so this isn't as obvious. What I realized today, when look at this, Funko Pops are ugly. Really, they, they make the characters look fugly. Because I looked up Nami, and she's fairly attractive, right? You know, for an animated character, right? But her Funko Pop is, like, you big blockhead, squarehead. I know that's the aesthetic, but, like, man, it's just not attractive. The blockhead thing just, you know, not happening. But the other thing was, apparently they're not, they didn't do it, because I did, like, Water 7, you know, um, I googled, like, uh, One Piece Water 7 Funko Pops, specifically. And nothing really came up, there was, like, characters I didn't recognize their names, and then, you know, Luffy and stuff like that. So then I just looked up Soapy Nami, <laughs> and just her regular character came up. So apparently they did not do Soapy Nami, which I guess, how would you even do that as a Funko Pop with a big blockhead, it wouldn't look any different? So I guess what you would want is like um, a plushie. You could do that as a plushie because you, you you could have a regular plushie that would look like regular Nami. But then um, the the soap versions of them, her and, and Sanji are like rounded. The, the edges are rounded and the fingers are you know stuck together. So you could totally do like a like a pl uh, soapy Nami plushie. That's what I would do. I think they're missing a hell of a marketing opportunity here. Then again, what was this, 15 years ago this came out? Nobody cares anymore? Maybe it was a big thing. Maybe they had them out there back then, but now they've been discontinued because it's been so goddamn long. That actually makes sense. I, I can see that happening. Oh, well. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about real quick. Just finished uh, Attack on Titan this week. My God, what a great series. It's in my top five. It'll be interesting when I once I've finished One Piece, where that ranks versus Attack on Titan, because I think Attack on Titan was nearly perfect. It had two major issues I had with it that keep it, for, for, for now, uh, keep it from being the top spot. So far, One Piece hasn't had those kind of issues. But it's also, it's not telling one cohesive story. So it's apples and oranges. I don't know you can compare these two shows. Attack on Titan is telling one cohesive story beginning to middle and end, right? This is a journey. This is literally the dictionary definition of life is a journey, not a destination. They're eventually going to get somewhere, but it's a journey. So they're two completely different kinds of stories. You can't compare them. But just for what I enjoy, something's going to be, I enjoyed this more than anything else I ever watched. So that will be the number one. It doesn't necessarily mean it's objectively better. But what I found interesting about it was I think the, the author finished the manga in 2014. He's 37 now. He started the manga when he was 19. And he finished it eight years ago, so I guess he was like 29. I guess he'd worked on it for 10 years. Something like that. I could be a little off here. But, like, he finished it in 2014, I believe. And he says he's never going to write another manga. Which I think is just tragic, man. But you know what else that tells you? How remarkable this is. How this man has been working on this. Will probably end up having been working on it for 30 years. Three times as long as the guy on Attack on Titan did. Now, it's just one story. Like, maybe if Attack on Titan was two times as long, he would have worked 20 years instead of 10 years. But just the tirelessness. Like, the, uh, there's other manga, like, what is it, Hunter Hunter or Berserk or something, where they would take these really long breaks, like five-year breaks, eight-year breaks or something like that. They take a massive long break in the middle of writing a manga. This man has no days off. He's got that uh, carpenter's work ethic. The going to the We go to the factory six days a week. We punch the clock. We never take any days off. We never take any vacations. His work, as a workaholic myself, his work ethic astounds me. It is so impressive. He's tireless. He's bound with energy and creativity and, and just never, the creativity just seems to always flow. It never, the spigot never runs dry, right? He's got to go down as one of the greatest authors of all time in any medium, no matter what form of content and what form of entertainment we're talking about he's got to go down as the greatest just in that right even if he doesn't stick the landing even if the ending of this is just just kind of peters out and it's like unsatisfying it won't matter man your your legacy is secured george r. r martin couldn't do this you know like he's i love george r. r martin but he's kicking george r. r martin's ass he just threw george r. r martin down a flight of stairs like it's just remarkable to me like the 
I know he probably gets all the accolades in, and I'm glad he does, because, my God, it's just such an impressive achievement. Okay, you know where we are. You know where we're going. Three, two, one. I really, I think I've mentioned this before, I love the design of the wolf. It's really cool. Unlike the design of the giraffe, which is really stupid. <laughs> What do you think the purpose of this room was? It looks like a park. Is this a rec room? Is this where they go to relax? It looks like it. Which is, you know, a very functional room. Like, you know, in a fortress like this, you want your officers and, you know, maybe guests to have some place to go to just chill out, man. I do wonder if it's real grass and real trees, though, because it's indoors, isn't it? This is indoors, right? So, how are you getting sun? I guess you have big windows to get sunlight in. Unless it's AstroTurf or something, which I find unlikely. Then again, we can see the sky. Or is that just a hole in the wall? Maybe it's like a courtyard? Like a courtyard scenario? I think it is, actually. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Stop apologizing. Okay, so th it is open uh, on top. Okay. So I guess you got rooms on all sides. This, this is like a courtyard in the middle of the building with an open top. You can go out here and chill out. It's like having a front yard, but it's in the, at the top of the building. Okay. These are the things I start thinking about when I show his footage for the third time, you know. <laughs> then again. Oh, okay, you see that? Okay, I see it. There is an open top. It's it's actually part of the building proper, but there is an open top. The, 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 the ceiling is open. Okay, I got you. That's how you can have vegetation in here. That's a cool ass design. I told you I have architectural roots, right? The author had to think about all this stuff. And that's a problem. When you're an author, you have to be a medical professional, psychotherapy professional, physics professional, engineer, physicist, scientist, you know, leather worker, anything a character knows the author has to know or you're going to look like an idiot. So it's impossible to be a master of all that stuff. That's why you have plot holes or you have things that don't line up. In-house, they'd be like, oh, that's not what a doctor would do. Well, that's because you can't be a doctor and a lawyer and, and a physicist and a bartender and a leather worker and a blacksmith. I mean, you, know, you have characters that have all these skills. The author can't know everything about every one of those characters' skills, right? That's just impossible. One human being or even a writing team can't be a, an expert on everything. But... This author has some kind of a background in architecture. You can tell. Look at his designs. His designs are consistently excellent. It makes some kind of sense. Maybe not always. Like I was talking about the uh, the fortress. Doesn't make sense with that little tiny bridge, land bridge, and then the big area being supported. That doesn't make sense with that. It could be intentional for all we know. He could know that and not care. <laughs> Stop being an idiot, in other words. Good shit. <laughs> Thank you for that helpful reminder. <laughs> Get your ass in gear. I heard Sanji's name. God damn right. Now we're seeing a ceiling up there, though. I think only part of it is exposed to sunlight. Dude, enough with the tongue. <laughs> See, this part's open. The back part's got a top, okay. Yeah, you need to shave. You're too hairy. 
<laughs> like she, I love it when she called him nose up. He's like, you're not even trying with the nickname anymore. That <laughs> was so funny. He's just waiting. Show up and get murked. Wolf repel. That's how you repel a wolf. Chump. Uh, shit. No, maybe not. Maybe that's how you get repelled. Man, I love his design. <laughs> we'll see about that. Meanwhile, she's dragging him off in the background. <laughs> yeah, then let's go, man. Yeah, let's go, man. That dragon he wasn't going to be fast enough. <laughs> He's looking at it, too. He, yeah. yeah, maybe you should. Stop with the tongue, you're disgusting. Yeah, he's not gonna have it though. That's right, right in the teeth. Right in your nasty tongue. <laughs> Wrecked. You didn't like that one, did you? What have I done? He's gonna get that wolf, wolf jitsu, I guess, so you call it. <laughs> you better have an iron body, by the way. Man, they are trash this entire facility. <laughs> yeah, meanwhile, he's like, oh, God, that hurts. <laughs> you fake ass bitch. It really is. Man, I like how he can bounce it, man. That shit's dangerous. Here it comes. What do you say, badass Cody? <laughs> I assume those are cooking terms. Probably French cooking terms. Man, you need better shoes, dude. Take this shot. He's still pushing you back. He's occupying you. That's all he needs. At this point, all you need to do is occupy him. <laughs> I like his laugh, too. Wolf fang stance. You just became a wolf today. How do you have wolf techniques? Think about it. He just became it today, right? Am I right about that? I think he did. You can't possibly have wolf techniques already. He might have been the ones who already had power, so... Or he had double fruit powers. I can't remember who took it today and who didn't. Don't play possum with me, bitch. Oh, your grad. Your accolades mean nothing. I spit on your accolades. Oh, shit. Really? No, he wants you to reach for it. He wants you to reach for it so he can mark that ass. Oh, bullshit. Here he goes. It's the same trick he tried before. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Don't fall for it. He wants you to reach for that key. I like how they set this up before. Uh huh. Bullshit. That's why it's, it's in crayon. Some people pronounce that crayon. You're weird. Uh huh. Look at you. Don't nobody believe this bullshit. She's dressed up as Little Red Riding Hood. 
Uh huh. Sure. Yep, little wolf castles. Yep, I was selling wolf tickets. My, what bright eyes you have. Look at them. Stereotypical pirates. She was just carrying her picnic basket and got snatched. Look at me. He's, he's hurt, man. He's trying to help and he can't do it. He's just a cub. <laughs> oh, he looks so cute as a crayon drawing. Bullshit. Yep. Don't know if I believe this shit. <laughs> he was a traumatized pup. You should be a scriptwriter. Uh huh. Uh huh. So anyway, back to me kicking your ass. <laughs> Just take your eyes off me and let me reach for this key. Reach for the key. Keep your eyes off. Look at him. He's grinning. Yeah, he ain't gonna go for this shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you put your head through a floor. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. Say that you were hot for us. Like, man, I really want to smash. That's something that Sanji can relate to, right? He might have bought that shit. <laughs> you were cute as a crayon wolf cub, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dumbass. It's his uh, posturing and bragging that really is, it makes me hate him the most. He's clearly a misogynist too, but that's like, you know, just one of the many reasons why he's reprehensible. Keep bragging, bitch. Yeah, the wolf laugh is better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all her fault. Everything's her fault. Can't wait till he gets smashed. <laughs> Chump. What if you knock a hole in the side wall and go that way? I guess he'd still block you, right? As usual. <laughs> Let me gaddle in your ass. You're starting to really piss him off. This I love this. That's right. <laughs> and the, the key was still on the floor, right? Which means you picked it up and you're gone. Right? Right? Yeah, so you got the key, so why are you still here? <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'll take care of Robin. He's still dangerous. What are you going to do about it? I would have run away. That's what I'm saying. Yes, exactly. I wouldn't have even talked to him. While his head was still up there, I would have been out of here. <laughs> yeah, he's pissed. Oh, shit. He is such a big boy. <laughs> That's right. I, I really believe that is a cooking term of some sort. And if... And uh, it's probably so is this. They call it a genius bonus on TV tropes. Like if you know the subject matter, like for instance, there may be a pun involved here. <laughs> like for instance, you, you know a cooking term. Like um, filet, for instance. You know, that's a common one. But say, you, you know, that wasn't commonly known. And he says, filet kick and cuts him into three pieces. 
there would be a pun involved there because you know the term he's using is actually has something to do with what he's doing to the person. Probably the case here. I just don't know these cooking terms he's using. So Jesus knocked the cigarette out of his mouth. Now you know he's pissed. He can't, you know, he can't go uh, like more than an hour without trying to poison his lungs. So, you know, now he's mad. Well, if if it was all, if your powers were all this, you wouldn't need the wolf form. Think about that. I got shave and moonwalk and iron body. Well, then why do you need to be a wolf? You know, so it's not enough. So don't be bragging on those powers like they're everything, man. <laughs> I love it, though. Like, I really love this character. The design is cool. The aesthetic is cool. His arrogance is annoying, but, you know, nobody's perfect. His howling is cool. Chew these nuts. Not literally, though. Man, it looks like you got him this time. At least his arm. You should run, though. The goal is to get the key to Robin. The goal is not to win this fight. Then maybe you have, maybe you have to win this fight to get the key to her. Fine, but that shouldn't be your goal. Hey, but she was your sister, man. See, that's the problem I've always had with him—the way he simps out. Right? It's a problem. <laughs> Just like food. I wonder what Kim Poo means. I should look that up. It's probably just a martial arts term, but, you know. Jesus. <laughs> he celebrates after every punch. Maybe you should wait till you get to the finish line, dude. Oh, shit. The spinning top kick. It means you can't connect with him. I think it's momentum. No? Oh, shit. Is it? What the hell is that? Is that like Iron Foot? Like Iron Fist, but with a foot? Oh, shit. Oh, boy. Well, then go ahead and use it before it cools off. Oh, shit. Roasted. Roasted wolf. Yeah, so much for your iron body now. Iron heats up just like everything else does. <laughs> Who's howling now? <laughs> What's up? That's right. Wrecked. Yeah. He's spinning around like a puppy. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Oh! That's what I thought. <laughs> but I thought your ribs were broken. Here it comes again. You can, you're going to moonwalk right into this kick. Look, we got some blood coming out. You don't win shit. What are you talking about you win? You ain't laid the glove on him. Well, he's laid a glove, but not all of them. Oh, shit, I see what he's talking about. Kick his ass. Literally. Hot foot up his ass. Wait a minute. Why is my ass roasting? He's got his foot between my cheeks. <laughs> That's right. Here it comes. You can't stop it now. Up your ass. We call this the hot cheek technique. <laughs> What's the opposite of being put in orbit? Being buried? Six feet deep. <laughs> Wrecked. Arrogant bitch. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's good shit. 
<laughs> That's a great line. God created food and the devil created spice. Oh, yeah. That was great. See, I actually like him. I don't like the the uh, wooden soldier who became a giraffe, right? Like They're both annoying, but the wolf is just like I've talked about. The aesthetic is cool. The design is cool. The wolves are just cool in and of themselves. Giraffes are not cool. You know, so Twitter's been going on talking about giraffes. Like, uh, let's make a long neck camel. <laughs> Essentially is what they've done with weird tongues and shit, right? Like, they're just, they're weird animals, man. They're not cool. But he, you know, the, there's something funny, just inherently funny with the character design, where this, hit the wolf character design is inherently cool and intimidating. There's nothing intimidating about a camel, right? So I kind of wish we'd got, what I'm saying is I kind of wish we'd gotten the camel fight or the, the giraffe fight first, right? Got that out the way so we could kind of have this as our dessert. This is the main course. And now I guess, you know, getting it, seeing draft get his ass kicked would be the, the dessert. I wouldn't want a whole episode devoted to that. Like this basically with the whole episode is devoted to this, but anyway, very satisfying. Three, two, one. Hey, where the sound at? There's no way I recorded this without sound, right? Holy shit. <laughs>